Hush up, but keep talking. We're at 50 subscribers. Thank you, you guys. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and hit all so you are aware of every time we make a posting. Let's go. All right, you guys, you know we're making hot processed soap today. So I've already melted my oils and butters. And what I'm doing here is just the final step of adding that olive oil. And now I'm going to go ahead and just mix it all in before diving in and pouring in that lye water, which I'm doing right now. And so I put my stick blender in and I'm, you're going to see me burp out that bubble. And now we're good to go and start mixing. And really we want to bring it to trace. And my personal preference is to bring it to medium to thick trace, but at least medium trace. And I'm sure you want to know why I have a preference for medium to thick trace. And to be quite honest, I'm not sure if this is even really based on anything that's absolute, but in my personal experience, I do believe that bringing it to a thicker trace does help speed up or shorten the whole cooking process. We're just about there, just about at a nice medium trace. Shortly, I'm going to stop stick blending. You can tell I can barely help myself. I do enjoy stick blending the heck out of soap. Um, but a really good consistency. I just want to show you what it looks like. You can see that as it's pouring onto itself. It's a nice medium trace. And I'm just mixing once more because, again, I just can't. I don't know what it is about soap. But um, just showing you the texture here. And then now I'm going to go ahead and just make sure I clean the sides before I close it to cook. Well, on my cooker, I have a high, low, and warm setting, so I'm actually going to cook the soap at the low setting the entire time. So it's been sitting for some time now, but first, before I do anything, I need to make sure to capture this for social media. Can I get a like for multitasking? To be a thousand percent honest with you, this mixing stage right here, completely unnecessary. I could have waited for it to volcano a little bit more along the sides before mixing it, but I also thought it was a good opportunity to show you the texture. Okay, so after I'm done mixing it, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and cover it and I'm going to wait for it to really start bubbling and fizzling and cooking upon itself along the sides here so this is what i'm looking for this is much better and you can see my volcano with my particular recipe it never just it just never really goes crazy this is the craziest that it gets it grows but it grows slowly um and i think it's because of my recipe and the temperature and also because i'm cooking it at a lower setting but now at this point i feel comfortable going in and mixing it and it's a lot less custardy than the last time you saw me mix it I think we're at a place now where just showing you the texture, mixing it, showing you the texture, just checking for cohesiveness throughout the soap, which is definitely there. Then I wanted to zoom in so you can see kind of when I streak it, what it looks like and how the soap behaves. What I'm going to do is go ahead and add in some plain yogurt and the reason why i'm adding plain yogurt you guys is just to increase the fluidity of my soap so i'm not going to be doing any kind of swirls or anything like that with the soap so i don't need too much yogurt because i don't need it to be too too fluid but rules of thumb you'll find online go anywhere from one tablespoon to one and a half tablespoon of yogurt per pound of oil used. And I guess the best way to figure out what works for you is to give those ratios a try. But um, here, just going back to the video, I'm mixing the yogurt in, not the best job, because what I'll do is I'll come back once it settles for about five minutes and mix some more. So I'm done here, I'm gonna let it sit for five minutes and then I'm gonna come back. This is what it looks like after sitting for five minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a good mixing to make sure any unmixed yogurt gets infused into this wonderful soap. Then we're gonna start adding our fragrance oils, our colors, our additives. So right there, I just added some ground coffee. All 
All right, we're going to focus on the base first, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and partition some of the HP soap you see right there for the base. And then we're going to work on adding the fragrance oil and coloring it. All right, so here I'm adding some cocoa powder mixed in with oil into the base color and I'm going to stir it in. It's not going to look like a very dark brown but this should be enough because there's also vanillin in the fragrance oil that you're going to see me pour in real quickly and I believe that those two partner together will give me a noticeably brown base. So the whole goal behind the soap was to make a bar of soap as muffiny as possible so muffiny in appearance and hopefully the fragrance combo that I've put together is reminiscent of a muffin but the other thing is you know HP really does lend towards beautiful rustic look and I just thought that the rustic look would also lean towards a muffiny look so that's just a little bit behind the inspiration of today's soap Forgive me for the angle of my camera. I'm going to adjust it just shortly, but all I did was just place that base along the bottom. Now that it's there, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that it spreads out along the sides, just so I have the whole bottom coated in that brown. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the rest of the soap. We're just gonna have two colors here. So before I split um, and add color to it, we're gonna go ahead and add in our fragrance oil. Now this fragrance oil combination has barely any vanillin in it, so I threw it in here. I didn't think I needed to worry about how much I add and if I needed to split before adding the colors first. So I'm just gonna really give it a good stir and it does help the soap become a little bit more fluid. Certainly not fluid enough to pour, but just wanted you to observe the texture. The last two colors that we're gonna be working with are kind of like a creamy brown color and we're just gonna get that by adding some titanium dioxide to the soap. And then we're also going to go for purple and you can see those two colors in the background and so here i'm just pouring the titanium dioxide mixed in oil into that and that's just going to get me not a white base but a, a light creamy i would say a, i don't know a creamy brown base you guys will see shortly Uh oh, I realized that I wasn't getting enough of the purple, so I went back and added more purple, but this time not in oil. I literally just added it onto the soap, and this part got a little messy because I was mixing quite fast, but I appreciate Micah's forgiveness and how easy it is to blend. Otherwise, I may have lost a little too much time with that soap because as you know, hot processed soap, the longer it's out, the harder it gets as it sets. Now this is a fun part. We're gonna go ahead and start putting our color in. I have a lot more creamy color than I do the purple, but my goal here and only goal is to make sure that each bar of soap has the brown base, has a little bit of purple and has some cream in each bar of soap. So there's not too much to what I'm doing. No actual pattern, just kind of randomly placing um, you know, the soap there, but I wanna make sure you see tapping out those air bubbles so you don't have those air pockets. And quite honestly, it's easier to get air pockets in hot processed soap if it's not fluid. So just be conscientious to frequently flatten it out and get those bubbles out.
And I'm gonna try and see whatever kind of swirl design I can get on top. And I'm using a popsicle stick there. And it's doing something. Um, and again, it's not really liquidy. So I'll take what I can get at this point, but I am gonna go ahead and garnish this soap or decorate the top a little bit. So that's always a fun part. So I'm going to go ahead and add some melt and pour raspberry embeds. Then I'm gonna follow that by adding ground coffee. Well, sorry, not ground coffee, but add coffee beans to it. And you've seen me do something very similar in my blueberry coffee so cold process soap tutorial. So yeah, that's what I'm doing here, you guys. Oh my, if you've made it this far in this video, you guys, thank you so much. I really appreciate you sticking around. So do you have a preference for soaping, you guys? Do you like cold process versus hot process? Do you not make soap when you're watching this? What do you enjoy about this video? Inquiring minds want to know. Fill me in. All right, you guys. So here I am adding a little bit of environmental glitter and then we're going to be moving on to cutting the loaf of soap. I ended up putting it in the fridge for two hours and it was still warm so I put it in the freezer for another hour and that made it hard enough and cool enough for me to take it out of the mold or out of the liner. The liner itself is a, well, I use the five pound brambleberry mold. The liner itself holds 17 bars however i make 16 bars one inch bars and then i have two half an inch ends and so let me show you what it looks like it looks pretty neat looks pretty neat but stay tuned for the video at or the clip of the end where you can see this these much better look even as i'm editing this video these soaps are so beautiful they look hella rustic you guys <laughs> And they do look muffin-esque, as muffin-esque as a soap can get, or a, a bar of soap can get, but, oh, I love them so much. In my personal opinion, I do feel like hot process soaps are a lot less maintenance because the rustic look gives you permission to not have to clean it all up. However, I wanted to see what the bar of soap would look like beveled. And after beveling it, I liked it. So I went ahead and I beveled all the other bars of soap. And there you have it. Bevel to the left not bevel to the right either to me are appropriate and beautiful what do you prefer